Hey everybody, it's Nicholas. I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired of being stuck in my room. I was thinking that I would go outside, but of course I want to be safe. I don't want to be around a bunch of other people. So I thought I would just go out and look for some rocks in my yard. We might just go outside, take a little field trip, and see what kind of rocks we can find. Now I need my adventure hat <clears throat> to do this the right way. All right, let's go. Look at what is in my yard. I've got so many different kinds of rocks in here. This one's kind of gray. This one is pretty cool. It's got some like shininess, like some red and pink in it, I think. So this is how I decided to organize the rocks that I found in my yard. You can see that around the edges of my circle, I've got different colors that sort of transition into each other. But in the center, I put the rocks that I couldn't quite fit into a single color because they were made of lots of different colors. So how do I classify a rock like this one that's got a huge white chunk and some light pink chunks? I can't really organize this one by color, but maybe I could organize it by size of the chunks in it. So if I found other rocks that had chunks this big in them, I would fit it with that one. For the rocks that had smaller pieces um, in them, then I could put these into a category together. Maybe rocks that I really don't can't really identify any individual crystals in, I would put that in its own category as well. I have some good luck in my yard. Let me know what you find. I'm gonna keep exploring a few more places. All right, so Waukee Mountains is closed because everything's closed, but lucky for you all, I have keys to get in. This is what it looks like when no one's here. Let's turn on some lights. Sweet. All right, so the reason we came in here is because I know that there are some really cool rocks to look at here in our museum. So when we're back open, hope you can come in and check it out. One of my favorite parts is in these drawers. These ones say metamorphic, sedimentary, and igneous. Okay, I'm gonna keep looking at some of these rocks in here. So these are all types of metamorphic rocks. Take a moment and try to see what they all have in common. What makes metamorphic rocks unique is the way they're formed. So these rocks were formed underground, way down under the Earth's surface where a lot of heat and a lot of pressure has actually changed the rock from something else into a new type of rock. So these rocks morphed from one rock into this new rock, which is why they're called metamorphic. So these are all sedimentary rocks. What do you notice about them? So just like the other types of rocks, it's not really about what they look like so much as how they were formed. Most sedimentary rocks form with the help of water, whether it's a sandstone and it was deposited in a sandy area, like on a beach, or whether it was a limestone because it was under an ocean. These are all igneous rocks. What do they all have in common? What makes igneous rocks so cool, again, is actually not about what they look like per se, so much as how they're formed. So this rock, which I think is pretty interesting, has all these little holes in it. This rock is actually super lightweight, and I bet it would float in water that's so lightweight. Each of these rocks are igneous rocks because they formed from volcanic activity, whether it was magma underneath the Earth's surface, or whether it was because a volcano actually spewed them out into the atmosphere. I have an idea. 
Okay, if you've been to Walking Mountains, then you know that we have a bunch of rocks. I found a great spot where I know different kinds of rocks are gonna be made. And maybe you can hear it in the background. A creek is an awesome place to find rocks. Look at all the rocks in this creek. There's really fast water flowing through here. I'm gonna reach in, see what I find. Ugh. Oh gosh. See some really big chunks. That's a big rock. Some other smaller rocks. What else is in this spot? Yeah, I'm mostly finding like large pebbles in the really fast water. If I come closer to the creek side, I noticed there's definitely different rocks here where the water's moving more slowly. It's all sandy and a lot smaller pieces. I don't see as many of the really big rocks as I found in the fast moving water up there. And then if I come down over here to where the water is almost perfectly still in this little pool, I notice there's not even sand anymore. It's just mud that has settled to the bottom in this really slow moving water here. Out in the fastest part of the creek are the bigger pieces of rock. And as it gets slower, it gets kind of sandier. And then where it almost completely stops, it becomes this really smooth, soft mud. Each of the different speeds of water flowing in this creek are actually perfect environments for forming rocks, if over a long enough time they became rocks. So ways to identify at least sedimentary types of rocks are ones that form in water. If you find a rock that's got really tiny grains in it, like super tiny that looks like mud, you know that that rock probably formed in really still water. Whereas if you find a rock that has really big grains in it, you'll know that rock probably came from some faster moving water. I thought I'd take you up this trail because we saw what was happening down by the creek, but let's see what's actually happening up on the mountain to the rocks up here. This doesn't even really look like rock. It's just pretty much soil right now. Just kind of crumbles into dust. If I keep coming all the way down to the ground and I look at what's down here on the ground, I see smaller pieces that have broken off. And again, they just kind of crumble under my hand. Up here on the mountainside, there's not a lot of rocks being formed. Instead, all these rocks are being broken down into smaller pieces. As the wind and the rain are all breaking down this rock into smaller pieces, this is not where a rock is gonna form. This rock is gonna go down towards the creek where it has a better chance of actually forming another rock. But up here, it's all weathering away. It's all eroding down into the creek. This is not a place where things are being deposited, where any type of rock is settling down. This is a place up here on the mountain where things are continuing to move downhill. Well, that was pretty cool. I'm gonna walk this back. All right, time to head home. Let's review what we learned today. Number one, you can sort rocks pretty much any way you want. Just look for different patterns. Two, scientists sort rocks based on how they were formed. Three, sometimes you can tell how a rock was formed based on patterns in its appearance. The three types of rocks are metamorphic, sedimentary, and igneous. Metamorphic rocks usually form underground through intense heat and pressure. Sedimentary rocks usually form at or near the Earth's surface with the help of water. Igneous rocks usually form from cooling and solidifying magma or lava. If any of these don't make sense, rewatch this video or seek out additional resources that might be able to help you answer your questions. And if you haven't yet started exploring the rocks near where you live, now's a great time to start. <sighs> that was a nice break. <sighs> now what? <laughs>